Hi everybody, Bonnie Gillespie here, and today we're going to talk about Tony Robbins' six human needs. These are, according to Tony Robbins, the six basic human needs that are met with pretty much every emotion, belief, or behavior uh, that we have or engage in in our lives. Uh, so I'm just going to go through them real quickly, but first a caution. There are some people uh, outside of the Tony Robbins organization that have put together a uh, test survey, and I know people love tests, that you can uh, fill out like an answers to a few questions and then it will tell you what you lead with and what your secondary is. And I'm going to tell you that the reason the Tony Robbins organization doesn't create its own test and monetize it or even make it free, because uh, it certainly could do either, uh, is because you're meant to really just look within and and analyze your behavior, your beliefs, your emotions, and figure out what you lead with and what's probably secondary, uh, because that can be a lot more meaningful than something that can be generated through, uh, through a, a test, a survey. So if you do decide to take uh, some uh, aftermarket survey that you find out there, it's fine. Just know that the purpose of this is for you to do some deep self-reflection and uh, pay attention to what motivates you to continue to do any of the behaviors, uh, have any of the emotions or the beliefs that you do. So here we go. Here are the, the six basic human needs, and I will elaborate on each uh, and then use myself as an example, as I often do, because it uh, will share, it will show you from something that you can see from the outside uh, how things manifest in a way that may help you with your reflection uh, internally. So the first human need is certainty. It's a very popular human need. The uh, way certainty pans out is you need to be certain that things are going to be a certain way. You need to believe that if this, then that. Uh, you need to have assurances in your life. And if you lead with certainty or have certainty as your secondary, uh, you like order and you like things to make sense. And even if you like a little chaos, it, you like the certainty of the chaos. And so that there's something to keep in mind. It's not just if you're a, a Monica Geller from Friends uh, that you are driven by certainty, although control is certainly a, a big part of certainty as a motivator. <clears throat> Excuse me. Second is the flip of that, uncertainty. A uh, basic human need of uncertainty. We we all have all six of these needs to some degree, but you may say, well, you know, how could you have both certainty and uncertainty? People who love surprises, people who uh, are driven by uh, by the discovery of what what is going to come next. Um, that they love that every day is different of it all. Uh, the the need for uncertainty is that uh, that surprise and delight. Uh, and uh, for people who are like, oh, I I love surprises. Yet yeah, you love surprises because you're in on them usually and that's what you what you love about it and so then you have to ask yourself where that falls on certainty or uncertainty uh, just a reminder of that there are people who love the adventure uh, of uncertainty and the not knowing what's coming next um, I say this in a way that feels like it's not me because it's not I am so so not an uncertainty motivated person the third one to take a look at uh, is uh, is significance Significance is this need to be recognized for the work that you're putting out in the world, for the good that you're doing. Um, this is for uh, recognition, uh, for respect. This is being significant, uh, even if it's in one person's life. Uh, it doesn't have to be to the masses. It doesn't have to be a public figure leader style significance. It really can just be uh, significant to another. Uh, and then uh, on the flip of this one is love. And uh, love, of course, if you're motivated by love, you are motivated by the attachments, by uh, the, the connection uh, that you have with someone else uh, and with the, the, the feeling that comes from receiving the love from, from that other person and also giving the love to that other person. Then number five uh, on this one is going to be growth. Growth is naturally the uh, evolution of anything of moving things forward of changing of having things be different in your life um, over time to uh, expanding with uh, regard to certain issues or or things or 
or experiences in your life. And then finally, the sixth one is contribution. Now, contribution is different from significance because it is, uh, it's similar in that it is about the impact that you have, but contribution it does not require any assignment. Meaning uh, if contribution is your primary motivator or secondary motivator, you are um, happy to do something anonymously. You don't need the credit. It's not about significance and getting the uh, the reward or the uh, attention for what you've done, it is the impact that you uh, have in the world and the contribution that you you create in others' lives. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> clear my throat for a little bit, <clears throat> apparently a few times. Goodness gracious. Hope I don't have to stop. <clears throat> okay. All right. And then we're going to talk about uh, how, how this played out with me. When I first attended a Tony Robbins workshop, it was the... Um, uh, unleash the power within four day workshop. And it, these are 16 hour days. It is an incredibly intense and long process being a part of these workshops. And it's a lot of energy. It's a lot of yelling. It's a lot of jumping up and down. It's a lot of crying, wailing. Like there's a whole lot to this, a uh, little more than I can take all at once. Just uh, to be honest, uh, it's, it's a lot of energy, but the very first day, uh, Tony Robbins, uh, laid out these six, basic human needs. And he said, everything that we do, every behavior we have, every belief that we hold, every emotion that we attach to, uh, stems from feeding a couple of these basic human needs. We usually have a primary, we usually have a secondary. And if we've got a single thing that we do, a single behavior, a single emotion, a single belief that pays off three of these simultaneously, uh, we run the risk of being addicted to that thing, addicted to that behavior, addicted to that thought, addicted to that belief, because it so efficiently serves half of the basic human needs all at once. And so to me, I was fascinated by this. I was like, I could just leave right now. I could, I could take this little bit of this lesson on this Thursday night, and I don't need to come back Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like I, I have already gotten so much out of this just by knowing that these six basic human needs are being met <clears throat> in some combination through every thought, every belief, every behavior, every emotion. I was like, okay, I, I now get myself a whole lot better. Um, for me, I led with certainty. At the time that I took this workshop, uh, this would have been in 2013, absolutely certainty all day. I wanted things to be a certain way. I needed to know when and where. I needed to know how. Um, I was very, very primarily motivated by having assurances. And even if the news was bad, I just needed to know. And so this is where, you know, things like I, I need to know how much is in the bank and I need to know that I, if I put in this much work, this is going to be the outcome and the result. And it's very interesting to me, the people who are driven by certainty as a primary or secondary and then choose a career uh, in entertainment, which is completely uncertain. Uh, and, and even though I am not an actor, I run a business that is entirely freelance and is entirely, uh, based on, on things I can't control the, the whim of the world. Like there, there's no, like I'm not a banker who works set hours and then earns a certain kind of paycheck. And I'm not someone who works in an industry that has uh, certain uh, peak seasons and, and slow seasons that make any kind of sense for like the sales of my book, for example, or when I'm going to be hired to cast or produce something or how many cl coaching clients or mastermind clients I'm going to have at any given time. I mean, it's just certainty is a very interesting primary human need for me to have had considering the life I was leading and continue to lead. Uh, so that was why I felt a lot of stress. That was why I had a great deal of, um, of struggle sometimes. And, uh, I, I found that a lot of things changed after I started reworking my focus. My secondary was very much significance. Uh, I had that saying, you know, just thank me when you hold up something gold and shiny. It wasn't enough that you could tell me, thank you, you've changed my life with your work. I needed to say, just so you know, 
you owe me. I didn't say those words outright, but that's what's implied when I say thank me when you hold up something gold and shiny. That's, you know, make sure the words Bonnie Gillespie come out of your mouth uh, when you are at that moment where you are getting honored for the level that you've been able to reach. You know, that that's significance. Um, there's this wonderful Calvin Coolidge quote, uh, it's amazing the things that you can get done if you don't care who gets the credit. And I'm, I'm bastardizing the quote. It's a little more eloquent than that. But the, um, the point is, we can get so much more done when we don't need credit. And I needed credit. I had a lot of ego wrapped up in the work that I did. And at that point in my life, there was a lot of stress in seeing my work stolen. Uh, we were in a run of, of time where my work had gotten popular enough that people with a lot more money and a lot more marketing savvy uh, took my playbook. They, they basically took everything that I created and um, started teaching it. And because they had greater reach, could spend more more money on advertising, had slicker marketing and a big team behind them, they could get out in front of people uh, way beyond my word of mouth, you know, folksy little family reach here. And I was crushed because I'm like, that's my baby and you stole my baby. And I, I found that it was because I was driven by significance, not by contribution. I, I remember sitting in that room, hearing these six and saying, I very definitely have behaviors and thoughts and beliefs and emotions that I attach to that are absolutely meant to support my needs for significance and certainty. And I can see where I make choices uh, in the positive and the negative because everything that you do can have a, a positive and negative side to it. Uh, it's like every superpower has the shadow. You absolutely start to see where these things that you continue to invest your energy in are, are delivering the payoff of feeding a couple of these basic needs and sometimes three of those basic needs at once, which is what makes them addictive and, and incredibly tough to give up. Uh, without a lot of work. And so here I sit years later, having done a lot of work on this, and I now uh, am at a resting point of my number one is contribution. My, my number one is contribution. I love when I see someone steal my work because I have no ego attached to, hey, I created that. And I say, I say the words, I have no ego attached to it with a qualifier because occasionally that, that old muscle does come back. Occasionally I do feel myself going, hey, that's mine. But then immediately I, I follow it with, hey, that's mine. Hey, that's mine. And it was so good. It got taken. Look at that. Damn, I created something so good that it's worth stealing. And look at them taking it out there and exposing it to more people. And how cool is it that this amazing concept that is going to leave Hollywood better than I found it is now in front of more people. That's so great. And the crazy thing is, the more I'm okay with my work being out in the world and not caring if you shared a password or downloaded something and emailed it to all your friends after paying for it once and then everybody else didn't have to pay for it. I, I know that shit happens. We, we see how many times the book is out there in other formats on websites that we could fight the copyright. And certainly I'm not stupid. There are times when I do fight it. But when I see how far reaching it is and know that what has happened since I've gotten less attached to making sure I get credit for it or I get the money for it is I have more business than ever. I have more people saying, oh yeah, I saw that. You know, Bonnie Gillespie created that. And it's like these other people will take it out there and try to teach it and it it can only reach a certain level before someone else says, oh, you, but you know, you know, you really should go to Bonnie because she's the one who invented that. And so I, it's like I'm getting the benefit that would have fed the ego part that was so driven by significance now that I don't give a shit. Um, isn't that interesting? That, that goes back to the whole uh, you will get what you want when you're no longer attached to how it gets to you. Uh, so there's that. My secondary, it has shifted to growth and I love it. I, I, I you know, and I may even flip those sometimes. Uh, I sometimes am more driven by growth than I am by, uh, by contribution. 
Um, yeah, especially when my ego wants to, to pull back on the contribution thing a little bit. I would say growth is, is very steady. That need for growth, for change, for better version of me, for really digging in on the psychology of why we make the choices that we make and, and just investing in the best version of myself. And this goes back to the, you know, how would you behave if you knew you were the best in the world at what you do, um, that you get a lot of growth from behaving that way. And I find that it's just incredibly fulfilling to be motivated by growth because I look at every opportunity, even conflict now, uh, from a place of what can I learn from this? How can, how can I grow from this? How can I be a better version of myself by going through this stressful time? And I before would not have felt that way by being um, driven by certainty before I would have without question gone, Oh my God, I'm out of control. And this out of controlness is taking all my focus. So what, what do I do to, to, come back into alignment with the control and certainty that I so need. And it's so interesting to be now in a place where I'm motivated by growth because I, I find myself so intrigued by where everything is headed. Um, and it's a very different me. Uh, and it's funny because as I'm recording this, I just had a mastermind group leave and, uh, and someone who's been with me for quite a while, she's been working with me for years. She said, there's just a glow there's just, there's a glow. You're, you're just on purpose. And I, I believe a lot of it comes from having shifted my need to have so much that was going on in my life aligned with certainty and aligned with um, getting credit, the significance, uh, you know, those, those were when I took a look at all my options that Thursday night in, in the Staples center with 6,000 people, uh, there at the Tony Robbins experience and right up there close and everything. I was just, that energy was so intense. Um, I remember feeling like I am ashamed that my top two are these top two. You know, I'm sitting here around all these fancy fuckers down here in the floor seats and, and not quite at the VIP circle, but it's like, I could see all the, and he attracts a lot of really impressive people. And I, I was like, ah, I, I don't think I get to feel my fullest self and my most connected with my purpose. If I am going to continue to be wrapped up in this ego shit, I'm, I'm not happy with what my two are. And in fact, this had such impact on me. <clears throat> I, I was actually staying in a hotel, even though this was in downtown LA, I had uh, very recently had surgery. And so it was not safe for me to travel back and forth uh, to the beach after uh, each of these very long, very intense days. So uh, I got a hotel room uh, right there at the Staples Center um, at the at the Standard so I could walk from the Staples Center over to my hotel. And I did that several times. I would take breaks throughout the day and not just uh, I, I, cause I couldn't, I, I just physically, I wasn't cleared by my surgeon to spend that many hours doing that much, uh, intense emotional stuff, uh, and intense physical stuff as well. Uh, just the adrenaline that would be coursing through me was not, uh, it wasn't safe for me at that point. So I, um, I did a lot of self care and I remember going back to the hotel room on that Thursday night and immediately calling Keith and saying, you need to, you need to come see me. I have to talk to you. I, cause I so wanted to work through these six human needs. Like it just was such an aha moment for me to, to realize that I was not who I wanted to be in terms of what motivated me. So the reason I, I lay all this out for you right now is because I want you to start playing with what might be your chief motivator, what might be your secondary motivator, what might be the motivators of those around you so that you can understand if someone is motivated by, uh, as our situation, Keith is, is motivated by uncertainty. He, he likes not knowing what's going to happen. He loves the unpredictability of, of the magic of what can happen every day. And of course I found that to be very challenging and confronting for me when I was driven by certainty. And I thought, well, how interesting that I would attract someone in my life who would consistently present me with opportunities to relax my need for certainty. I started then paying attention to how can I be more adventurous? How can I be more excited for the mystery? And I'm never going to put uncertainty as one of my top <laughs> 
ever a top. I would say even, I don't know if it can have any chance of being in the top four because I'm not, I'm just not motivated by uncertainty, but I found ways to make growth something that was exciting and ways that that could then allow me to soften my relationship with things like uncertainty. So I would just want you to pay attention to where these fall for you, where they fall for others, and really take a look at your most consistently held beliefs, uh, thoughts, emotions, uh, and your behaviors, especially anything that you've ever wanted to soften in your life. Take a look at what needs it serves and see if maybe you could start, rather than trying to shift behaviors that you're not crazy about, see if you could maybe start shifting one or two of your chief motivators, those human needs that are met through those behaviors, because you may find that you're able to make more significant change by becoming fed in a different way. It's a different way of kind of attacking this whole thing about uh, human behavior and our, our choices and our feelings and our, our connection with one another. Uh, these are things I could continue to talk about forever. So let's do so in the comments. Uh, I'll share a couple of resources below as well, but I'm really interested to hear how this all lays out for you. And until next time, this has been Bonnie Gillespie sharing with you Tony Robbins' six primary human needs. So much more. Mwah.